Hey, ladies and gentlemen, this is Carlos Phoenix with The Lounge Magazine, and today I have a special show for you. Uh, I have Makeshift Jukebox here with me in my studio, um, and we're just going to interview them about their music and what, you know who they are, what they're about, and hopefully you guys will become a fan because their music is amazing. So I'm going to start introducing these guys. They're going to introduce their names. They're going to introduce what they uh, play in the band, and then we're going to get into what you guys uh, are about, your music that you've done. We'll play a little bit of your music and your music video that you guys have just launched, and, uh, and we'll go from there. So let's start. Cool. Hey, I'm Philip, and I play drums. I'm, I'm Aaron, and I'm the singer and the guitar player of the band. Uh, I'm Keith. I uh, play bass. <laughs> All right. So uh, we're going to start off with... Uh, we, we've been having some fun before we started recording, so uh, we're gonna we're gonna introduce uh, how you guys got together, uh, what kind of music you guys do, and uh, tell me a little bit more as to uh, your beginnings before the band, and then how you formed the band, and where you guys are going now. I know you're a new band, so you you, you probably don't have a much of an existence before this, but from what I've heard. Uh, music wise you guys sound like you've been together for a while so the quality is really good and uh, so I'm impressed by it so l let me get a little prehistory between you guys um, well the band we've been together about eight months now um, working with Big Snow Entertainment um, we're a grunge rock band uh, we try and you know be loud and ugly guitars and have fun with that so um, that would be our style. Um, we just went out and recorded our first CD. It was called Hollywood, and it's out on iTunes now. Um, we got plenty of information and music and everything up on uh, our Facebook. You can check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Um, we got any other? Just finished the music video. Reverb Nation. Reverb Nation. We're on a Reverb Nation. Yep. Um, then we got a music video we just finished up for our single off of the album called make it out alive um it's on youtube so definitely go check that out if you want to um get a little glimpse of the what we are you know uh, so tell me uh, more about uh, what you were doing before you got into the band um well we all met um before this um it was a long, yeah, before, when we, I guess it was more the high school kind of days. Um, <laughs> <laughs> high school bands. Right, when everyone's, you know, at your mom's house and Practicing. screaming into a microphone. Your mom's like, I don't know what that devil music is, uh, but you better stop it. And so, like, <laughs> we all went through that phase, I could say. But, um, no, I mean, that's where we met each other originally would be back then. We played in that underground hardcore metal scene and uh played a couple shows together and we're just you know friends from doing that stuff and then uh when makeshift started um that was a project that i originally started and um uh, it got to the point where we actually had to really take it seriously and uh, find members so um philip philip is the longest lasting member right now you know he's the he's the He's the old guy in the group now, and then uh, Keith just came in. And they got these two played in a band together before, so they knew each other. And uh, Philip introduced us. So, yeah, it's been a fun road so far. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Now, um, were you in a in a band or something beforehand? Yeah, um, actually, me and Keith were in a band called As Siren Sing. It was also kind of the hardcore area practicing in the parents house kind of stuff so you know it was fun and it kind of shaped us up to kind of what we are all musically and everything and we just combined our talents and stage experience i guess and that's kind of where we are now now did you guys form the band um do you think uh because it just naturally kind of came together or did it you know was it was it an accident i mean how, how does that work you you, you guys were in a band what what, what happened to the band the older, our band? Yeah, the, the previous band. Oh. Well, it was also just kind of another friends thing, um, and we just kind of got together, and we just kind of played what we liked, and, um, you know, we tried to find people who knew where Venue was. Actually, he did a lot of the show hooking up in the old band. He would just kind of um, email Venues, and we would hop on shows, and we just had fun, you know? Okay. That's pretty much what we did. 
Would you say like because I I've seen like high school bands uh, friends get together they start playing sometimes they're playing uh, old old people you know other music uh, rock that exists cover songs thank you um, do you guys get together play these songs and then suddenly there's one guy who wants to go one direction another guy wants to go another direction maybe a little bit more hardcore and does that conflict is that the type of thing that happens. I've never been in a band, so I'm asking these questions because I'm right, curious. Right. It's always cool to to know what happened. In you know, you guys become huge, and everybody just remembers when you're huge. Nobody will remember what you were when you were a kid. So it'd be cool to kind of have that conversation. What happened when you were kids? You know, what what happens in a small you know uh, high school band, let's say, behind the scenes? Because you guys, your sound, and when you hear this music you know these guys are going to go somewhere so it's not a matter of uh if it's going to happen it's just when it's going to happen so what what has happened in your early days and then i'm sorry my questions get to be really long <laughs> no i mean it was just you know going to school and all those things people moving away i don't think that it was anything ever i mean there, you're always going to have creative differences and stuff but um everyone coming from that all had their different ways they wanted to do things and be different and i think the most solid thing for us and what has kept us as such a tight-knit group is that we have a direction we have a goal and we know what we want to do with our music so i think that we're all on the same page and the writing process is i mean once again we're a new band so we're still trying to figure it out yeah we're feeling it out but i mean we're definitely coming together a lot better now and i have yeah understood you know what the direction is that we want to do with this and it's uh it's cut and dry you know we just want to have stuff that will be entertaining front to back as far as the set goes and our cds go i want it to be when or we want it to be just when you put that in there's not anything that you skip and there's not anything in there that you fast forward through there's nothing in there that's boring it's gonna be in your face just like we said earlier just that dirty rock that you're gonna want to listen to the whole CD front to back and that's our goal when we're writing is that we want our music either live performance or CD to have your interest have your attention the whole time so do you have a story to tell he yeah, he, <laughs> he's pointing at you. You gotta have a story. Um, as far as joining the band, Aaron was kind of the founder, and then Philip joined. And um, I'd actually been out of town for a while, and I was just coming back into town. And he was like, "Hey, man, we're looking for a bassist. You should try out." Um, I heard a couple of songs, kind of digged it, so I was like, "Ah, whatever. I'll go ahead and give it a shot." And then I made it in. Here we are. Um, and as far as writing differences, um, he likes more of the four chord kind of like you know grunge rock stuff i'm more of the modern more riffy kind of writing and so we do step toes step on each other's toes a little bit but in the end it kind of equals out and you get a really good mixture of each of them what is the next direction like what what do you think is you finally made it i mean outside of a record deal are, are you are you looking for that is that your is that part yeah. of the direction I think that, um, honestly, I would say our main goal, um, I don't know if there's ever going to be a time where we'll be satisfied yeah. with, uh, like, we've finally made it, because um, that's not our goal to hit, you know, a peak. We want to just keep going. Um but our main thing that we would like to do is just to get out and impact as many people as we possibly could with what we have to say and how we're going to say it. Um, we all come from our different stories and our message is a band. We stay true to it and we always will. And um, so, you know, when you're talking about a certain level that we want to reach um, right now, I, I think that impacting people yeah impact and the really the sky's the limit we don't want to stop and say there's an ultimate goal i want to just go for it you know when it comes to record label or whatever it is that's 
there's not anything in there that's going to change that. Um, the other things, the other circumstances that'll come into play, it's, it is what it is. But as far as a band, we have a direction that we're going to go for, and there's not going to be any stop for it. So, All right, so there's arguments uh, being said everywhere as far as music either being dead or rock being dead. Um, you know, for, for a while, let's say hip-hop was like the main thing. Uh, now there's a lot of underground movement with dubstep and that type of thing. How do you feel about the changes of not only the music environment, but the record label environments, the, uh, you know, now everybody listens to stuff on an iPhone and iPods and stuff. How do you feel that's affecting a potential success or movement that you guys are doing? And if it, it is changing and affecting you, have you guys even thought about it and discussed it in terms of, well, how do we face it and how do we take it on and how do we embrace it? Um, I guess I would say there's movements everywhere, but the thing that I think people will never really miss is the whole live performance aspect. And like, you know, the dubstep stuff is cool and stuff, but I think just a rock and roll performance is something that people will just kind of always like, you know, so. You have any more on that? Yeah, I mean, you going off of that, um, live performance wise, we'll try and captivate the audience in that way um, and try and be interesting, but. Um, it is difficult now. I mean, honestly, if you, I was <laughs> driving the other day and had my presets on the radio and it just seems like any preset I push now, it used to be some other station, but now it's all pop and every single preset, every station is pop and it's the same six songs over and over again, which is great. Lots Congrats. You know, right. The only rock station that we had around here. Um, you know, congratulations to Katy Perry and Bieber people, but, uh, you know, <laughs> no, you know, good stuff. But, uh, I mean, it is difficult. Um, but we work with a really great team right now and, um, uh, in big snow entertainment, um, a lot of hard work and it's definitely worth every second of it. Um, no complaints at all here. That's a, become a family to all of us and um we're really excited about what the future holds nothing like that as far as what the music industry and everything has become and labels what they search for and everything none of that scares us we like i said before we we have our direction and we're going to stay true to it no matter what all the things circumstances are so yeah i'm just ex i think we're all pretty excited about what the future holds and we're going to do our thing and stay true to it so yeah but you know if we do get an opportunity to play with taylor swift that's cool you, sorry. Yeah. all right so what i'm going to do next so uh, we're going to introduce the music video uh right before we do that um i want you to give me an idea of what the song's about and uh was it done locally here in georgia it, it yeah, right yeah. up by georgia tech yeah okay, right by georgia tech cool um, so give us a little bit of background on that and then we'll just throw the video on well music video you can uh check it out on youtube it's been up for a couple weeks now um we're really proud of it it was the first time i've had uh any sort of experience like that first either of us actually all of us yeah this first music video that we've done um we worked with a group called southern lights productions um amazing yeah amazing group of guys it was really it was one of the best experiences we've had um i mean obviously long and tedious but um it was never felt that way though you know it was a lot of fun the whole time um so we're really happy with it it's set um just in this big old warehouse and we brought a lot of amps and a lot of lights and yeah, just <laughs> had fun with it performed you know it's it is a performance video but um i think one of the main things that we were talking about too with music is um we are a rock band and we stay true to that it's very simple um and you'll see that in the video too what's the song about the song is about i mean personally for me it just comes from past experiences that i've gone through in life um relationship wise or you know the struggles with any of that stuff that you can get caught up so easily it's just basically about how easily 
we as humans can get caught up in the things of this world um, so, yeah. and the certain lifestyles and so how we've dealt with those and how we are trying to work through those experiences. <laughs> Yo, what's the name of the video? Make it out alive. Make it out alive. Check it out. <laughs> In the video and now we're just chilling as you're watching the video so since you're back i guess we'll continue the conversation 
Now, so so you guys, now uh, who's a f- fan of what groups? Like, what's your favorite, uh, let's say, rock bands? Or it doesn't have to be rock. Some people are into classical music and they just happen to play rock. So what? What you know? Tell me some info. Um, I think we all like a pretty wide range, but we all kind of like we like a lot of Foo Fighters and um, a lot of Weezer, some Jet. Well, what do you like? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, no, you, you. What do you like? Oh, oh what do I you like? You said we. We like. Oh, I'm just going to cover the whole band. What do you like? What do I like? Um, well, when it comes to rock, I definitely like Foo Fighters and I like Jet. And um, I actually, I like a lot of metal, too, on okay. the side. Well, what, what metal band? So, um. Just say it, dude. Oh, God. Let's just say it. No, I'm not. Um, I like uh, Children of Bodom. They're a European band. And I like As I Lay Dying here. And. Um, just kind of a lot of that stuff okay. out there. Some of the heavier stuff. Um, obviously, we're all fans of pretty much anything Dave Grohl's ever been a part of. He's a big influence for us. But nah, I think personally, one of my favorite things to listen to would be um, I love old folk blues. I really do. Yeah. I, uh I spend a lot of time. What? Um, I mean, I really got into Sunhouse recently. Um, you know, he's one of my favorite ones, and Pandora is an awesome thing because I just type in Sunhouse and it shows me all these other artists out of like the twenties and stuff with their out of tune guitars. So it's really fun. Is there any influence in your music with that? Yeah, I think the the power and the soul and the where they're just coming from and the passion that they have that comes out in their music. It's not obviously when you listen to it, like it is out of tune and they sing terribly most of the time, but it, the passion behind it is something that you can't deny. And uh, I think that that would be a big influence for us is that passion. As far as my musical tastes go, I listen to a lot more of the electronic kind of stuff. Um, I have no problem with the radio, Katy Perry, Britney Spears, you know, um, I listen to a lot of dubstep kind of stuff, Seven Lions, Gemini, Bass Nectar, if any of you guys know what that is. Um, and uh, as far as rock bands go, my favorites are Linkin Park and Breaking Benjamin and Tool. Don't let me forget that one. Um, yep, uh, I, I like a lot of the different sounds that all of them use. Like he listens to the, don't laugh at me, you listen to the soul in the music, I listen to the sounds. You know, like if it's an interesting sound, and it's and it's blended well and produced with the rest of the track. I think that that's an art in and of itself. Um, so, cool. all right. So now I'm I'm a big uh, fan of, of most music. Uh, uh, like country, for example, I have to only see live. I can't listen to country music on the radio. <laughs> I don't know why. But but if I go to a, let's say a bar or whatever, and there's a country band playing, there's something about that live. You know, just knowing that they know their instrument and they have that 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 kind of soul feel into their their music, uh, maybe not pop country per se, but you know, like like real raw country. Um, that's that's something I'm into, and I don't know why I'm telling you because I'm asking the band, but whatever, I thought I'd share anyway. Uh, and and now if you if you go the, on on the lounge uh, website, uh, and this is for you guys too, if you go to the lounge website, um, there is a beta of our app. Uh, for the iPhone and Android and stuff, and it'll it'll be released uh, hopefully January February, and inside the app you get uh, people have the ability of submitting their music onto the lounge, so you you're in, you independent artists have the ability of sharing your music to the world through our website through our app, and the way it works is you submit the music, um, it is connected I believe with SoundCloud, and what happens is um, I'll take a listen to the music. You know, because the people who's going to be clowning around, and and I want to take I want to take the serious people, the ones that are really out there producing some stuff, um, but they're just not out there, and and hopefully share it with you guys uh, through the application. So, um, I get a lot of dubstep, and that's one of the reasons I brought it up. I get a lot of dubstep. There is some hip hop, but it's open to anyone and everything, uh, all music. Uh, so, uh, hopefully, maybe you guys will share at least maybe a tune or whatever. But I know you guys are selling on, on iTunes. Uh, the cool thing about the app is that you can't download it, yet you get to listen to it whenever you want. And hopefully that kind of gets you into wanting that song and buying that song. So that's the idea of the lounge. 
app. Um, on top of that, all these episodes will also be on the application. So I just wanted to announce that since uh, you guys will be listening to the show and you know maybe you want to see more, hear more, and that type of stuff and also take these episodes with you. So that being said, um, what's next for you guys? So I know you got uh, a performance coming up in February. Um, so I'm going to give you a chance to share where and when um, and any other performances you might have set up after that. Uh, is is for this album? Is there like a small tour? Maybe or do you guys plan on doing anything like that? And on top of all that, uh, when do you start shooting? You know, recording for the second album. Um, we do have, like you said, um, we have the show coming up February twenty third at Center Stage. That's something that we're uh, really excited about and focused on right now. Um, we just did release that last album, um, Hollywood. Once again, check it out on iTunes and. Yeah, it's definitely fresh for us, and um, I mean, we're still in love with it, and I think that it's something that we're all really proud of, so it'll always have a special place in our hearts, you know, being our first one, but um, I mean, you can always go to our Facebook, um, facebook.com slash makeshift jukebox, all one word. Um, We got a Twitter, and we got Reverb Nation. We have all those online sources that you can definitely keep in touch with us, Um, always looking to interact with new people, too, Um, but I mean, we're back um, on the grind again with writing new music. We're, uh, I think one of the goals is that we're just going to continue to try and pump out new music as much as possible. Um, definitely happy about the album, but I don't think that we'll ever, uh, like we said earlier, reach that point where we're satisfied and going to just be content with something. So um, we are going to keep working to come out with new tunes and, Keep rocking face. That's the goal for us. <laughs> Who would be your dream band to go on tour with? Uh, man. Anything with their girl. <laughs> I mean, they're not even around anymore. It's like, huh. It's so difficult now. Like, who's even out there? I think my the dream band to go on tour with would who? Nirvana would be good because that will always be a dream. It'll always okay, be a dream. Right, fair enough. But no, I mean, whoever brings the most people, that's. <laughs> <laughs> hey, whoever's selling out at the time, yeah, that's that's it. We're good. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, let's end this interview. We're gonna make it a little bit shorter. Um, let's tell everybody how they can find you, uh, both on Facebook, Twitter, and uh, you had you said Reverb Nation. So so let, let's get the hook up. Let's get people to listen to you and find you. Um, as far as online stuff, we got something for everybody. We got ReverbNation.com slash Makeshift Jukebox, YouTube.com slash Makeshift Jukebox. What are you saying? What? We got Facebook.com slash Makeshift Jukebox, Twitter got, Twitter.com slash MSJB Band. We're also going to be on the new MySpace. Keep an eye out for that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be sick, dude. That. It's gonna be sick. So MySpace is having. A I signed up back. today. What are you saying? Um, yeah. Oh well. Really, do check out our video on YouTube uh, for Make It Out Live. I know that you just sat through it, but share it, get it out to everyone that you can. Um, like we're really proud of it. And like the Facebook. Please like that Facebook. iTunes. Check out the iTunes. We got our album out, Hollywood. And Black Widow's out, too. Um, Then you can also go to BigSnowEntertainment.com. They, or it's BigSnowENT.com. They have all the other artists that um, work with him, including us. And there's plenty of great acts, lots of awesome music. So make sure you go check out all that stuff. It's good. Awesome. All right, guys. So thank you so much for coming. Um, I hope to uh, catch you on your live performances and also um, you guys follow them. You know, you've heard their songs. I'm going to play something when we go out into, of the show. But, uh, you know, this is the kind of talent that deserves to be out there. They're really doing it with their hearts, their passion. And, you know, it, it's what the lounge is about is trying to get these artists to get recognized and also to have them get the uh, recognition they deserve. Um, so thank you again and uh, you guys keep watching there's more episodes more shows and a lot of more things are going to happen next year 
Uh, the Lounge Magazine plans on turning into the Lounge Network. So there's going to be different shows um, focusing on different markets. So keep an eye on that. And also our app that will be coming out. You can do the beta test right from our website and put it onto your iPhone and your Android product. Thank you again. Thank you. Awesome. And so we're going to play a song from them right now. And let's hope you enjoy it. Thank you.